Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and today we're going to talk about AWS Lambda with Python. Really, I think one of the most exciting ways to build services is to take a function in Python that has an input, it has a unit of work, and it has a return, and we can attach that to an event like dropping a file into Amazon S3, or listening to a streaming service with Kinesis, or responding to some other event that you would choose. The cloud platform is really the, the future, and by py using Python, let's say 10, 20 lines of Python, you can build incredibly powerful systems that scale to millions of concurrent requests. So let's go ahead and get started. It'll take us a little under an hour. Everything we've covered uh, in, in the case of AWS, it fits very well because you can do event-driven programming, and that's one of the advantages. So if we look at this, for example, right here, notice that with AWS Lambda, and, and maybe even I'll go into a, uh, a presenter view here to just kind of make it a little bit cleaner, but basically uh, with, with serverless computing, this is really the, the final destination for, for building services for the most part. You can do things like AWS Lambda, you can do Fargate, uh, you can build API gateways, um, you can actually you know, communicate with storage systems, all the stuff are things that you can do with serverless technology. And in particular, if we talk about AWS Lambda, this lets you run code without uh, provisioning or managing the servers, and you can trigger the code in response to events, and it can scale automatically. Uh, and so, Here's a great example of why you'd care about Lambda. You can enables you to bring your own code. It integrates with other services. It's a flexible model, a flexible permissions. You can build in fault tolerance. And so again, large scale distributed computing jobs, ETL operations, Lambda is, is really an incredible uh, tool to use. And it works exactly with uh, Python functions. And so what can you do with a Lambda? You can build uh, static websites right here, complex web applications. You can build backends, right? You can build application services, mobile IoT. You can process um, uh, files. Uh, you can do stream processing. You can build chatbots. That's actually a great use case for Lambda and some Python functions. You can do voice recognition. You can do I IT uh, automation. And so let's take a look here at, at how, in fact, uh, a Lambda would work. This, again, is the pattern that I've been talking about before which is you have um, basically an input, uh, you have a unit of work, and the unit of work is right here with the lambda, and then you, you output that somewhere. So you, know, you, you, you put that destination uh, to another location. Some of the things to be aware of with uh, lambda are that uh, it, it also has the ability to, to uh, basically work in, in response to triggering, triggering of events and so your application code and the dependencies are all built together uh, in, inside of this. And so, so let's look at a couple examples of how you would do this, right? So what we could do is you could do a pull type event, which is stream-based polling. So you could actually, every time something goes into a key value-based database or a stream inside of Amazon, you could call this over and over and over and over again in parallel. Uh, and, and that's a great way to do it. You could also do non-stream-based polling. You could push things inside of uh, uh, SQS, and this would be a great place uh, where you could actually respond to events. And, and, and we should be able to play with a few of these in a little bit. A few other things to be aware of, if you wanna call other services, you would need to have permissions, uh, like a role in AWS. And the way you do that is with IAM resources. You would push these events a trigger to a lambda function and again the function is the center of the universe here you would uh, automatically add a trigger to a lambda function and invoke that you could add a policy as well and this is the way you do security on the AWS platform and this would allow that function to do the work so here we go here's an execution role you would just say hey I want you to be able to I don't know read from s3 and that would allow it to to, to do its work so the other thing you can do as well is that, uh, I think we mentioned this, it, you can use Node, Python, Ruby, Java, Go, right? And in, in a nutshell though, one of the, the next things I'm gonna show you here is that this is really the equivalent in the cloud to what I talked about before, input, unit of work, output, is that you have a handler, and this handler is the event. So this is the trigger 
from some other part of the AWS cloud. It could be uh, event information uh, from a user. It could be also an S3 event. It could be some other part of, of, of AWS. And typically you will actually go through here and uh, deal with that event uh, basically by processing the JSON payload. The context just shows you what's happening when it's running at runtime, right? So this would be the request ID, you know, maybe like how long it's been running, what logs are, are getting sent to it. Uh, so this can be really good for doing uh, instrumentation. So how do you build a lam Lambda function? Again, almost identical to what I've been talking about, which is there's a function, it takes stuff, it does some work, it returns back a, a value. And so you can see here, this is a really trivial uh, example uh, of a Lambda function. And why writing functions is really kind of the new thing, <laughs> right? Is you can write a function, you can do the most powerful things that, that anybody can do. So what are some of the best practices? Right, separate the business logic, write those functions um, in a modular way, also treat them as stateless. So, so that's really one of the advantages uh, of a Python function. Only put things in you need, don't put a bunch of extra third-party libraries. And then also you wanna reuse anything that's temporary, like you don't wanna be making socket connections every time, time you call a Lambda, right? That wouldn't make sense. So let's take a look at potentially, uh, you know, a little bit more theory here. And, uh, and, and, and say that you, know, you wanna add logging statements, you wanna use environmental variables, you wanna avoid recursive code. Uh, that, that's, so like if you had a function that called itself over and over again because of an event, that could be a real problem. In a nutshell though, uh, this is really how you upload a Lambda, which we kind of built into some of the stuff is you could test it locally or you could build it inside of a cloud environment and then debug it there. To configure it, you can also configure memory, timeout, and pricing. Uh, and so how would you deploy a Lambda? You can see that there's things like snapshots, right? That's one way that you can deploy a Lambda. There's aliases. So you can have multiple copies of the, of the function, and this is how you could do DevOps with it. Here's a good example of this, using versioning and aliases to, to handle that. This is another really cool feature of Lambda. That, that is awesome is you could put a bunch of libraries in a layer and then you could have uh, all your code actually call those layers and then you wouldn't need to worry about basically handling third-party libraries. Uh, so anyway, that's about it, about what I wanted to show you in terms of that. So let's move on now to, to actually building out some, some stuff in the cloud. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a new environment which is Cloud9. And Cloud9 is very similar in a sense to GitHub Code Spaces. Let's go ahead and build this out. So we'll say create an environment and we'll call this um, AWS Lambda Functions. And we put a description here typically that says, this is my environment for building AWS Lambda Functions. And, and then you have a choice here. If you wanna use the free tier, if you leave everything by default, you'll use the free tier, which is a great way to interact with it. For the most part, this works fine, depending on what it is you're doing. I use it all the time. If I'm doing a demo, I'll probably pick a little bit larger of an instance, just so I can have a little quicker response time. Also, it will use the runtime associated with where you would deploy in, into Amazon. In this case, Amazon Linux 2 would be great, and it'll time it out after 30 minutes. When I click this, it'll take, let's say 30 seconds or so, and then it spins up this whole development environment for us. And what's awesome about this development environment is that I'm able to uh, you know, basically build out and interact really easily with the raw uh, you know, AWS uh, ecosystem. And uh, if I go through here, I'll, I'll show you a couple things that are that are pretty cool, <clears throat> and in particular, one of the things that we that I think is awesome is that it's all designed to work very seamlessly with the AWS platform, uh, and, and that's probably one of the the reasons that you'd want to use Lambda to develop to develop your code. So, a couple things to point out here is when you first use uh, the cloud-based development environment that notice that it has integration for 
API gateway, so you can actually test APIs that you develop. Uh, it has an integration with App Runner, so you can actually deploy microservices very easily. You can also play around with the container registry, so you can push containers and you can play around with Lambda functions and explore S3. So really, this is a, a really awesome environment for you to build serverless applications for if you're using the AWS platform. And you can, you can even just read through all the documentation here. Let me show you a couple things though. First, the, the first thing I would typically do would be just to show you that you can run commands like this, right? So I can so AWS LS and it'll, it will pipe these commands. Now, I think we mentioned this before, is that I like to actually, you know, basically build out a structure a lot of times or build a virtual environment. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. We'll say virtual env, I'm sorry, Python 3 dash env env. And with the Cloud9 environment, they like you to invoke virtual environments this way. And I'll say source dot vnv bin activate there we go and i could i could probably create a new repo just for this this is probably a good idea so let's go ahead here and let's make a new repo and this one will be just for uh my uh lambda so we'll say aws lambda functions 1111 and this is a collection of examples of Lambda, which again, builds right off of this concept of functions. We'll, we'll say Python here, and then we'll say create repo. Now, once I create that repo, one of the problems here is that, I don't know why I didn't create the readme file, but that's annoying. But basically I can go here and say code local, copy this, and put this next to my Lambda environment and try to clone it. This won't work, and let me show you why. Clone it, doesn't work, because I need to put the SSH keys in. Unlike GitHub, which has the SSH key authentication just implicitly you know, included, in this case, because I'm not on GitHub, it doesn't know anything about GitHub, so I'm gonna have to type in SSH hyphen keygen dash T, RSA, and then uh, I'm going to say cat, and go through here and print out this public key. There we go. And now that I've got that public key, we can go back here and we can go to settings and we can do SSH and GPG keys and create a new one. And we can call this AWS Lambda. Once I do that, it'll ask for authentication. We'll do that. And now I can do the up arrow like this and the cloning works. There we go, we got the structure. And again, I already told you, I like to just create a, a basic structure when I'm working on a project like this. So I'll go through here and just quickly create a requirements file, uh, requirements.txt, and I'll also touch a make file. And, and then I like to be lazy as well. So I, I'll just uh, copy some make file I've already got to just take that out of the way, uh, which is, I think, super nice to not have to write it again. There we go. Let's just put some of this in there. We'll tweak it. Sure, that looks pretty good. Uh, and then for requirements file as well, I can just copy one I've got handy somewhere and right there. And let's do this. Let's grab this. I probably don't care about the, the, um, the versions right now. I'll do that later, if at all. There we go. So we have PyLint, PyTest, that looks good. Coverage, probably like IPython. Uh, and then what else would I probably want? Maybe Boto3 as well, uh, because Boto3 is the way you can make a, uh, API calls. So let me show you how you can start to build this stuff up into a pretty cool service. So let's go through here and um, let's, let's actually say make install. This will go through and install our libraries. Now, when you're using the AWS platform, not only can you do all that really cool stuff with Lambda, but you can also access the entire ecosystem of services because we have Python. And let's look at the documentation real quick. If we go to Bodo3, 
uh, look at all the stuff you can do with Boto 3. If we look at the available services, you can you can look at just a ton of stuff. Prometheus, API Gateway, Backup, Chime. I mean, just, uh, just amazing amount of stuff, right? So what I typically do is I'll just click on the docs and I'll just follow what they say. Okay, there we go. Let's try this out. So how do you try out a piece of code here? I like to do this. I like to do IPython and just paste it in. We say client. And then this is what's so awesome about this Cloud9 environment plus IPython is I can do this. I can say client tab and I can just look at all the different things by just using the tab complete. And I think it says list buckets. Does that work? There we go. Now, now I can list all my buckets. See how easy that was? So pretty cool. Let's, let's actually build this into a, a little script here. Um, I, I think that would be a great Lambda uh, project to, to kind of play around with a little bit here. So what we can do is I can just say, um, let's say, uh, call this uh, buckets.py. And we can start to use some of our logic to, to kind of get this thing working. So we can say, um, for example, uh, let's, let's build out uh, import Boto3, right, like that. And then we can say uh, number of buckets, like that. So, so what, what, this is kind of a silly script, but it'll just take, it'll tell me, it, it'll let, it, let me see how many buckets I want to to be displayed, so we can we can say uh, inside of here, for example, um, client right here. So we have a client, and we say uh, buckets right here. Now, I would probably, if I was going to build this out, I would do something like this. I would say ipython, and I would say the same thing I did before. I would just kind of try out the code and say client, and then now I would put this into a result which would be like um, buckets like this. And then I would look at the, the type here that comes back. So if I say type, and this is where we can really take advantage of all the stuff that we covered earlier with like dictionaries and everything. So look, I could say buckets.keys like that. And notice it says the buckets. That's what I care about, right? I just care about the not the response metadata or who owns it. I just care about the name of the bucket. So there we go. And we could even see like how many there are. Okay, 101 buckets. There's a lot there's a lot of buckets. So so what we could do as well is I could actually even just pick one bucket. Right? So I could say um, essentially bucket the first bucket. There we go. That's the first bucket that I've got and, and in fact, uh, I could even just get uh, the name of the bucket by just doing this, like something like this, right? Like it's a name, right? And so what's cool about playing around in an interactive prompt like this is that I can really get to experiment with how I would build a, a real service. And so I might even eat, leave that open. So I might have a second window where again, I look at the history and I source the virtual environment again. So I, I don't know if you knew this, but you can, you can execute that number by doing an exclamation in three like that. And now I source that environment again. And now I can do both at the same time. I can look at the interactive style if I wanna see how I build something. And I can look at the, um, I, I, can, I can kind of use this to build out a script. So we can do this. We can say buckets is equal to client list buckets. That looks pretty good. And then probably what I would wanna say is I would say, for um, for bucket in um, let's say buckets we would do this we would and we could put a little count here at the top right here we could just do this we could say count is equal to zero and we could say uh, prints, we could say f string and say processing bucket. And we could do the count here. Right, so and maybe we'll start with one. 
uh, let's see, processing bucket. Yeah, we'll do, we'll start with one. We'll say processing bucket number, bucket number like that. And, and uh, we'll, we'll probably put it, put it in some kind of a cool little format here. So it looks, looks, looks easy to, to debug. And what we say is um, if the count is less than the number, right? Cause that's the, the number we want to process. Then we would go through here and we would keep processing the buckets. So we would just say um, basically for, uh, for item in, actually we're already processing this. We would just say uh, prints and we would do an F string here. We could just grab this. We could just do grab the thing that worked before, which would be something like this, which would be the, the bucket, current bucket, which would be here, All right? So we, we just want to say uh, essentially buckets. This would be bucket here, uh, current bucket. And then this would be the, <clears throat> this would actually be the, um, well, let's, let's change this to zero. And let's change this one to count. So essentially, um, this, this would go through here and give us the current buckets one by one. And then it would go through here and, and print this out. And we'll say um, uh, found bucket or something like that. And then go through here and say bucket, just like this. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then we would, just, at the very end here, uh, we would just, every time we do a loop, we would do count plus equal one. And I believe this should work. Found bucket, oh, current, found current bucket. We wanna do this, we wanna say found current bucket. There we go, just like that, that looks good. Now, why is that, oh, we need a, a colon, there we go. So that should just basically work. So let's let's go ahead and see if we can uh, run that. So how would we run this? Well, at the bottom of this, we could, or we could just do IPython again, actually. We could actually open up a new IPython. That's an easy way to do it. And say from um, buckets, import number of buckets. Number buckets number buckets okay we're in the wrong repo wrong directory so we need to go into here type in ipython again say from bucket import number of buckets there we go now let's try it let's just say um, number of buckets and we'll try one what does that do uh, string indexes must be integers so if count is under if so what we can do to print this out here is we can just say for bucket in buckets to um yeah actually that's a good a good point actually what one of the things that we can do here is let's actually do a lint and let's actually use our friendly lint here and we'll lint the buckets like just like this and let's let's see if we can figure out what our bug is and so we don't see any logical problems yet, but it does look like what we could do is we could add some print statements to debug this. That's what I typically will do is I'll just say, um, maybe what I can do here is, is, is actually call this as a script to start with and call this number of buckets and just do one and add a little bit of a print statement here. And, uh, if count is less than the number, that looks good. Let's let's run it. Let's see what happens if I run this code buckets here to so Python buckets. Uh, so this is saying current bucket bucket count. Uh, so at least it's getting to the processing bucket. This one it gets to here, and then it blows up on line eleven. So it could be that for some reason, let's let's try this. Let's just hard code it. 
to see if that's the issue. Uh, so it didn't like that. So, so I, I think it's something to do with this. So bucket, buckets. Ah, we don't need that. Yeah, that, that's the problem is we don't need that. Uh, I believe we can just say current bucket. If count is less than one, uh, why don't we just print out the bucket? That would be a great way to, to debug this. And we'll just print out the bucket. And then we can comment this out. Uh, for now and let's see what happens print bucket okay so there we go response metadata so for bucket in buckets um, and so I think what we have here is we could start to debug this um, by going through and actually one by one running these lines of code and that's that's what i would typically do so i would go okay let's let's figure this out what's what's going on here so let's let's debug this thing line by line and so i can just say uh first step um from boto3 uh, so the reason i'm building this by the way is so that we can put it into a lambda so from boto3 uh in or import boto3 so import boto3 boto3 okay so now first step let's do this there we go. Next, we'll do list the buckets. And we're probably going to find a very simple bug here. And then we're going to say count is equal to zero. And we're going to say for bucket in buckets. Let's just print the bucket. Bucket. Aha. So. For whatever reason, I think for bucket in buckets. So what we care about here, if we say buckets, is that we want to care about buckets. We're just calling it wrong. So we just need to go here. And actually, we want to put in instead, you notice these are the names. We, we want to just find the, so, so we want to basically say for these are all the 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 keys. So we just want to look at the keys here real quick. So we want to say buckets.keys, just like this. Aha. So we want to see buckets. So let's try that for bucket and buckets. And we'll do buckets. That looks like more promising. Let's run our script again. Aha, there we go. That's looking better processing buckets, right? And so now we want to say if the count is less than the number, count plus equal one for bucket, if the count is less than the bucket, then you uh, increment up here else you would basically say uh, you would say re basically return there we go we could just return and I think that this should work let's go ahead and try that uh, there we go so it did only one bucket which is awesome so we got that that working now what happens if we do two buckets let's try this does two work there we go process two buckets and then all we need to do is pull out the name out of this. So we just say current bucket is equal to uh, bucket. And we just need to pull out the name like that. And we can now print this out. And does this work just like that? There, that's much, much better, right? Processing bucket. And we could even take out this print statement. It's too, too verbose. There we go. And now let's run it one more time. So we basically have a cool Lambda function now. There we go. So it says processing bucket, zero, found bucket, found bucket. There we go. So we've got a, a, a Lambda function here. So what's beautiful about this, so let's, let's lint it. Let's make sure everything looks good here, is that we can build this into a Lambda function very easily. So first, let's check it in. So let's say get status, get add. Um, we'll get push. It's going to say... Um, Oh, get status. Let's see. 
oh git commit adding adding a bucket count like this and now if I push this we can go to the repo that's here which is called like lambda something it should be here lambda uh, lambda functions 11.11 there we go right so we, we got this thing we got a really cool function really generic right so let's build this now into a lambda function and deploy it and build it even into a web service if we wanted to but first let's just start with an easy way to do, to to build this into a lambda function so i'm going to open up another tab here and go back to the console say aws console and we can go here and i just log back in here and just go to lambda and there's you can build it inside of cloud nine as well just for speed though i think it's going to be easier to do this we'd say create a function and we'll call this one um, bucket counter bucket counter or something like that and we'll do python 3.9 and now this is where we're going to have to be careful because it's going to talk to s3 and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the default execution rule here so how do we do that we can use an existing one um, I had already created one, uh, an admin that allows me to do prototyping. So we'll use that one and let's go ahead and create this function. Now, I just, while this is creating, I just go back to my code here and pretty much just take this entire function here, which is pretty awesome, and go back to this. And this is what's kind of cool about lambdas is I just go like this. I just throw that in there, right? I just say, okay, here we go. We got this, and I just need to import Boto3 now, like that. So say import Boto3. And what's cool about this is that I should be able to, um, I don't even think I need the JSON for now. We can get rid of that. We can just make this really simple. I mean, if I wanted to build a web service, I could do that later. But I, I just need to pass this into number of buckets so i just need to say event and we'll say uh, number like that uh, and we'll call this uh, number is equal to uh, event number just like that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to say basically uh, process buckets right and, and so what's going to happen by the way is that uh, I, I can also do this. Um, I can also maybe if I wanted to even increment or count it, but just to keep things simple, I, I could keep a list of all the buckets I process, but I'm just gonna print these out into console. So I'm just gonna say, grab the number out of an event, run that code, which is right here, and that's it, right? That's all I gotta do. And I could just say, return I don't know return number or something right so we, we see like what what somebody actually passed in so I can now deploy this thing and we can now test it out let's try it. let's see what happens so we can call this um, uh, you know 10 and then we just say here we just say number we have to look at the syntax again I think it's number that I, that I asked for number and then I just say 10 and if I go here Format JSON, create, yeah, it's looking for the word number. Okay, there we go. Let's see if it works. Aha, so it says name process buckets is not defined. So we need to put the right name in here. <laughs> number of buckets, there we go. So number of buckets. So let's change that to number of buckets and then do a test. I'm sorry, deploy it and then do a test. And fingers crossed here, there we go. We have a test event here. Now look what it did. It went through here and it processed those those uh, buckets here, which is awesome. Look, all these different buckets in my account. Really, really cool stuff here. So let's test it again. Let's build a, another test event. Now let's just test, um, let's test like five. Let's only test five buckets. There we go, we'll test five. What happens, format it create it and we go through here and we go test there we go there's five buckets pretty pretty cool how how you can take functions 
and then wrap them into another function inside of AWS and do incredible things. Now, because this is deployed, let me show you something that's pretty slick that you can do. Um, we can actually go to this AWS console here and we could look at Lambda and look, there's bucket counter. Let's double click on this. Uh, invoke on AWS, see that? I can go there and now I can basically just put in the payload uh, generator. Now this is where all of the events uh, would, would pop up. So basically you could look at, you know, anything you wanted to process in terms of Amazon, like uh, SNS, SQS, et cetera. Uh, all this stuff could, could be processed here, hello world. In my case, what I'm gonna process here is I'm gonna put in the number of buckets, right? So I'm gonna say number here, and I could do 10. And then all I have to do is scroll down here and invoke it. There we go. And we can see the whole the whole thing has been processed uh, and I've, I'm able to return back that payload. Look, there we go. So this is cool is I'm invoking it remotely. Uh, so it's a great way to prototype things by just using this the this interface.